Dear students, today we will study about uh, natural nanoparticles or our topic will be are there nanoparticles in nature. Now nanotechnology is the general term for designing as well as making anything whose use depends on some specific structure at the nanoscale. Now what is a nanoscale? It is generally taken as being 100 nanometer. Uh, the 100 nanometer means uh, 100 millionths of a millimeter or 100 billionths of a meter or it may be less than that. So it includes devices or systems made by manipulating individual atoms or molecules as well as uh, it uh, includes materials which contain very very small structures. Now uh, nanomaterials are usually considered to be materials with at least one external dimension that measures 100 nanometer or maybe less than that. Or uh, nanomaterials are the ones with internal structure measuring 100 nanometer or less. And they may uh, be in the form of particles, maybe in the form of tubes, rods or fibers. Now the nanomaterials that have the same composition as known as the materials in the bulk form may have different physicochemical properties than the same material in the bulk form and uh, they may behave differently uh, if they enter the body. So they may thus pose different potential hazards also. Now uh, if they are aggregated nanomaterials they also need to be assessed in the light uh, as uh, in the in this light as they may exhibit properties that are similar to those of a single nanoparticle especially when they have an unusually large surface area for a given amount of materials. Now uh, the nanomaterials can be artificial uh, that means the lab synthesized or they uh, mostly they can be natural also and today in our topic we will uh, take into uh, account only the nanoparticles which are in nature. Uh, while studying natural nanoparticles uh, or nanomaterials, let us take lotus leaf as an example. We always find a lotus leaf uh, clean enough, all the lotus leaves are clean enough, whatever be the muddy habitat they are dwelling. And the second phenomena which normally comes into our uh, sight is that the, the leaves are extremely uh, water haters as if or we can say they are a super hydrophobicity. There is super hydrophobicity of the lotus leaf. So whenever water falls on a lotus leaf, immediately they water form the droplets and the droplets roll off dragging dirt along with it. So we can say that the lotus leaf actually is having a self-cleaning effect. Now this self-cleaning effect is actually known as the lotus effect. Now what is the nano thing behind this lotus effect? We uh, Now we can define that the self-cleaning properties of the lotus plant actually is a combination of two different uh, phenomena. One is the presence of some microstructures on the leaves and the other is the epidermal change, uh, cells present on its rough surface. Okay, so the both uh, combination of both these that is that is the microstructure on the leaves as well as the epidermal cells ultimately lead to a tremendously uh, uh, new phenomena or you can say that is a nano phenomena. And we can see it uh, with this particular SAM diagram or SAM uh, uh, scanning electron microscope photographies. This is a lotus leaf and when it is uh, studied under a scanning electron microscope is found to have this kind of uh, structures and you see these are the darts or this and ultimately whenever water falls on it, it has a wax like structure so wax uh, water uh, hater you can say the wax like structure ultimately help the water uh, falling on it to form a droplet and that droplet whenever it moves through the leaf it can 
take away the dirt along with this now the water droplets as well as the wax or the dust these are in the nano range and since the lotus leaf is capable of uh, executing this kind of phenomena this means that the lotus leaf also must have some kind of nano things in its surface so that it can uh, take away the nano dirt or the nano uh, whatever the materials there may be mud particles so it can take away that mud or dirt along with it so there must be some nano technology in the lotus leaf also giving it the name lotus effect now if we uh, look into the same micrograph in the lotus leaf in a somewhat higher magnification we find that these are the microstructures present on the lotus leaf these are uh, extremely in the nano range obviously and uh, these the cells cover the epi uh, epicuticular wax epicuticular wax is the uh, material behind the water heating property so ultimately this nano structures help uh, the uh, along with the wax, pre wax present in the surface help the water to form the droplet and take away the dart present in it okay there are some other nano particles or nano materials also in nature uh, in nature and the um, most commonly we see the lizards or the insects where they are capable uh, of sticking to walls because of their nano structures on their feet whenever we see a lizard moving freely on the vertical wall then obviously that can uh, the question comes to our mind that how this is possible this is possible because of the nano structures present on this uh, four uh, feet similarly the spider webs are made up of super strong nano fibers sometimes the spiders when they uh prey some bigger uh, mosquitoes or uh, insects like that they can hold that uh, bigger insects or uh, any insect on their spider web now uh, even the heavier insect cannot um, um destroy the web because these are made up of some nano fibers which have uh, which are stronger enough uh, that can be explained only if we know the technology behind the nano things now the butterfly butterfly wings having the dif uh, different type of colors or you can say the bright colors or bright um, uh, i mean the uh, wings or shiny wings these are also actually due to the presence of some shiny reflective nano crystals okay and then uh, the chloroplast present in the uh, green leaves these are actually none other than the small nano factories that uh, in, uh, absorb uh, solar light and then that solar light ultimately lead to the process called photosynthesis and uh, ultimately give us the glucose molecule so these are the examples some of the examples where the uh, principles of nano science or nano technology must be um, there to explain why this happens and how this happens okay so if we take into this uh, lizard i mean the uh, lizard's fit then it, it, it was found that anton hasse first stig suggested that the gecko which is of the same origin gecko or the lizard stick by intramolecular forces it has some remarkable toes okay how this remarkable why this is remarkable toe because this uh, toe is crossed by ridge covered with hair like stumps called setae and this setae they are hundreds of tiny endings uh, having a spatula uh, and then ultimately they can stick to the wall uh, wherever they move so this uh, on uh, scanning electron microscope again we see see that this particular toe ultimately having a lot of nano structures who, who can stick to the wall or stick to the micro holes present on the wall and thus the lizard uh, can move freely in that particular way coming to the butterfly the beautiful butterfly having the nano crystal in its wings 
we can say that they also have some intricate structure called sitae, same is the that with the uh, lizards and they, they ultimately they look like the pine tree or the fir tree. This is a scanning electron microscope and about 400 nanometer long responsible for producing constructive interference. Interference means addition of light and that is why when light falls on it uh, into this particular structures, ultimately after reflection they add up and ultimately we get the different type of um, colors in the wings of a butterfly. Okay, next, next uh, some uh, future use of nanomaterial if we see that where we will be having the nanomaterials in future, whatever be their use like nano coating on the hip and joint or nano electronic implant, nano capsule present on the drug, nano scaffolds, nano sensor, everything actually are inspired by some nanomaterial which are natural. Okay, these are artificially um, synthesized nanomaterials, they will function in this particular things like nano coating, nano electric implement, but uh, from where they are designed, they actually mimic you can say they actually mimic some of the natural nanoparticles and by mimicking only, um, um, if they have to mimic then obviously we know that the particular substance is present in the nature. For example, uh, seeing the uh, lizard's toe or the seeing the lizard's uh, feet, the, the uh, idea of adhesive, adhesive or glue came into the mind of the scientist. Glue or adhesive, the idea of adhesive mimicking the uh, geckos, uh, I mean the lizard's feet came into the mind of the scientist. Similarly, by watching the spider's silk or the spider's web, high tensile strength fibers idea came into scientist's mind. Similarly, uh, with the help of the lotus leaf idea, now we are having dark and water resistant paint. Okay, uh, all the paint companies now uh, uh, say that their uh, paint is waterproof or dark proof. From where this idea came, this idea came from the lotus leaf effect and now scientists are trying to produce that kind of effect in our paints also. The butterfly wings that will uh, give the display technology. Now we are having different type of TV screens, monitors having this kind of uh, butterfly like uh, variation, variety of uh, colors or variety of ranges. This is possible because scientists are mimicking the lotus leaf. Uh, and there are so many, the shark skin that ultimately um, inspired to scientists to uh, reduce drug switch for athletes. The shark screen who, who, who can tolerate uh, different type of, uh, I mean, uh, attacks or different type of things. They can, they cannot, uh, they keep themselves, they, they, they don't feel the hurt. That kind of medicine uh, actually are now produced uh, by the scientists by taking into account the shark behavior, okay? So, uh, all these, whatever be the nanomaterial we now use in different type of uh, walls, uh, I mean works, uh, these are actually inspired by natural nanomaterial. Now, what are natural nanomaterial? So, natural nanomaterial, therefore, if we say that these are the nanomaterials made by nature through biogeochemical or mechanical processes, without direct or indirect connection to a human activity or anthropogenic, anthropogenic process. So, natural nanomaterials are those which are produced by nature without the help of man. Okay, this is fire, this is uh, a volcanic eruption, this is rusting, these are different type of nano material like spores uh, these are uh, sedimentations 
bacteria, cyanobacteria, yeast, fungi, algae, what are these? These are all natural nanomaterial. The volcanic eruption doesn't need the help of any human being to occur. Fire, precipitation, then uh, the spores, flower spores, and the uh, sedimentation, etc. All these are naturally made. They do not need any help from the human being, but they are of nano origin. Okay, they are of nano origin. How we can confirm? We can confirm them by taking their XRD, by taking their SAM, by taking their TAM, etc. And ultimately, they will define that the fire that this will produce the ash or the soot. If you take them, if you measure their dimension, you will find that they will be having dimension between 1 to 100 nanometer range. Volcanic ash, they will also give you dimension between 1 to 100 nanometer. Okay, so the hunting for nanoscopic material in the environment, one soon realized it. A fair number of natural nanoparticles can be found outside the realm of life okay and uh, for instance nanoscopic ash or soot particles of volcanic activity fires or other type of combustion these particles are natural yet usually not biological volcanic ash cloud contain a wide variety of polydispersed micro and nanoparticle these particles range from 100 to 200 nanometer in size and are chemically primarily composed of silicate and iron compound if we consider the volcanic ash they are readily suspended in air and once inhaled may lead to serious problem now uh, fire is also another <clears throat> bio uh, natural nanomaterial and uh, ultimately uh, water the being uh, precipitation or rusting if rusting is a chemical phenomena if we go for it and we analyze it we will find that the rusting rust produce is also a uh, natural uh, i mean nanoparticle synthesis procedure so these are some of the ways See, some selected example of naturally occurring inorganic micro and nanoparticles. Calcium carbonate. So that uh, calcium carbonate, uh, actually it occurs in the uh, surface water and fi finds its applicability in industry, in biotechnology, in cancer therapy, in drug delivery, in plant nutrition, promotion of plant defense against pests, and uh, the, he, they, there they use it in the nano form. Second is the case with alumina, which is also found in the surface water, and it is effective against a different type of desalination and defluorination of water. Then silicate for drug carrier and is a catalytic a, a, a application. And silica, which is found normally in volcanic eruptions, uh, is used as a food additive and anti-caking agent in ultraviolet uh, anti-reflection coating. Then uh, basinite, that means the calcium sulfate, is found mostly in sea water and it is uh, used uh, in bone regeneration. That is why we have the calcium tablets whenever we have any disease related to our bones. Then iron oxide found uh, in iceberg hosted sediments found applications widely in medical diagnosis and controlled drug release. Manganese oxide uh, imaging remediation of contaminated soil etc. Sulfur, the elemental sulfur in mineral walls. It is also finds it also finds its applicability in medical applications. Then shoot in the form of carbon because uh, shoot is not, uh, the carbon one carbon who doesn't get oxidized to carbon dioxide so soot is mainly the carbon nano uh, and uh, it uh, finds its implications in composite reinforcements and nano reactor etc and then uh, three uh, very special metals the non-reactive or the novel metals to some extent the silver gold and platinum all are found in the nano range in the nature silver is found in aquatic and environment which is used mostly in antimicrobial uh, i mean nano functionalized plastics paints food 
uh, container, domestic appliances, textile, medicinal product, and in cosmetics. Gold is found mostly in gold deposits uh, or in the ores. And it is um, used mostly in biosensoring, in immunoassays, in medical application. Platinum, uh, which is produced from automobile exhaust in the nano rents, and it finds its applicability in biomedical application, for example, the cis platin, and the nanobiomedicine, catalytic thermal applications, etc. Now, uh, lastly, uh, if we go for uh, hydrogen sulfide gas, H2S, which is most common to us, and the hydrogen sulfide ion, then when these two species uh, is uh, undergoes oxidation in presence of oxygen, they lead to the formation of elemental sulfur. Okay, that is also in the nanorens and it is found mostly in water. So, it is eventually a part of large, larger sulfur deposits. So that elemental sulfur is also in the uh, nanorens and uh, this sulfur nanoparticles are also actually produced from volcanic sources. Uh, and these are uh, in fact in some I mean, uh, ways their harvest is also and this nano sulfur are employed directly for instance for uh, to as a substitute for colloidal sulfur in agriculture or they may require some uh, maturations in the form of spontaneous or controlled oxidation of hydrogen sulfide contained within the layer. Uh, just I wanted wanted to say is that our life becomes easy because uh, because of the application of different type of nanoparticles in nanomaterials, nano rods, and uh, uh, nanofilms, etc. But mostly these are artificially synthesized in the lab. But the nature is also full with different type of nanomaterials and these nanomaterials ultimately inspire scientists to prepare uh, some nanomaterials in the lab which can mimic or which can copy the function of the natural nanomaterials. Uh, if I go for uh, some other pictures, these are some examples of nanofiber and nanocrystal from the plant life. For example, the cellulose nanocrystal under the uh, scanning electron microscope appears like this. This is cellulose nanofiber uh, appears this uh, particular uh, in shape. Then bacterial cellulose, this is the scan image and collagen. Uh, this is the um, origin of this collagen nanofibrils. Now these are originate from wood, plant or crop with a width 5 nanometer and the length is 200 nanometer depending on the source from where you have collected that cellulose or whether from a plant, whether from a wood or whether from a bacterium. But whatever be the source, for example, the nanofiber from wood, plant, crops are below uh, having a dimension below 100 nanometer all these are actually natural uh, nanoparticles so, so i say that these natural nanoparticles uh, be it the uh, lotus leaf be it the uh, uh, i mean the lizard be it the anything uh, uh, who can inspire scientists to prepare something uh, to mimic the functions they carry out in nature. So the nature is full of different type of nanomaterials or uh, nano uh, crystals and that ultimately make our life beautiful. Thank you.